appropriate for us as a message. Um, and the only song I can really kind of think of. Now it's recording. All right. Awesome. Hey, everyone, yeah. and welcome to a brand new episode of Beauty Unlocked. I'm Carissa, and guess what? I'm here with the daughter of Lily. Yay! For part three. I'm so super excited. I'm nervous, too. I don't know why. Yeah, me, too. I think it's because we haven't done it in a long time, and it's also the one that we've been dreading for a while. It's like That's very true, actually. So listeners, uh, listeners, what is it? Listener, what is it called? That warning? Listeners discretion. Trigger, yeah, trigger warning. Listeners discretion is advised. Well, pretty much on on all episodes of Beauty Unlocked because the 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 language I use sometimes is anyway. But yeah, so today what are we what are we talking about today? Pornography and the influence it has on violence. Yes, so it's a pretty heavy topic. Actually, I was like it it's it's heavy. It's quite a heavy topic. It is. That's. I think that there's a valid to, regardless of the language that we use, I think that it is important to prelude this with a really big, massive trigger warning. We are going to be talking about sexual violence. We're going to be talking about relationship violence. Um, so if those topics honestly hit home for you and you're not ready for that, maybe this is not the episode for you. Um, as well, I know that we have younger audiences ranging from ages 18 to about 30, uh, it's really funny that we don't include ourselves in that anymore because we're like in our late 30s. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's so weird. <laughs> but, uh, it's so weird. Yeah. But um, to all the younger audience, this is something that um, we wanted to do because it is important and it is something that we should make light of. And uh, you would be surprised of how embedded and ingrained it actually is in society. Yes, that's that's very true. Um, I think it kind of transcends pornography in a way. I mean, like we said in a previous yeah, episode, we do live in sure. a very pornified society as is. So it kind of transcends mm -hmm. that pornographic milieu in a way. And it's, yeah, it's, you can find it everywhere. Um, talk to me about your research. How was it for you? Was it like, how did you find the research? It was hard. It was, it was difficult to do because, you know, the objective here isn't to convince people that pornography is wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, that isn't the objective. I think that, again, I reiterate the point that I made in the first episode, which is that pornography serves a purpose. I genuinely believe it serves a purpose. And it's been around since, you know, morality was yeah. around. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's as old as old goes. Um, and like you, I'm happy that you mentioned that it almost transcends pornography, the violence, um, because there was a moment where I was researching, where I was thinking, well, what came first? Was it violence or was it the act of violence and sex? That's a good question, yeah. Because that is what I want to know. What came first? Like, who thought, guys, for the context of obviously the podcast, right, which is pornography, mm -hmm. Um, who thought, guys, I have an idea. Let's go with it. So you're going to beat the shit out of a woman and you are not even going to let her breathe with your penis in her mouth. And you're going to be calling her a whore and a mm -hmm, slut. Mm -hmm. And it's something that really sparked a conversation with a couple of other friends because the song Cardi, the Cardi B yeah. song, WAP came yeah. out. And I, for the record, I fucking love Absolutely. that song. I love and I think yeah. that I think every single woman should be fucking singing that yeah. out loud. Yeah. Like yeah. I do. I'm like, and we'll, we can talk about that yeah. later, but it's, there's a part where Megan the stallion actually says like, you know, I like pain. Yeah. I like to be treated like this. Like this is, this is consensual for me. Like I actually fucking enjoy this. And I was just like, great topic for, Beauty this, is, this is where it goes. Like, yeah, I think that's this. like the key word that you use is consent and consensual. You know, um, mm -hmm. that's one of the, and we did mention this previously, you know, about, about that. It's all about consent. The problem is that, for example, for me, like didn't receive any consent education, didn't even know the word consent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's exactly. one of those things. So yes, it's, a, it's an empowering song. And absolutely love the song, but at the same time, it's 
we we have like a, a kind of uh, how would you say? There's a uh, some listeners that will get the mixed messages because it's not saying, very good. It's not yeah. like in the lyrics saying, "Oh, I I I'm consenting to this pain." It says, "I like pain," which means to somebody who doesn't know, let's say, they'll immediately not all. We can't always generalize, obviously, but say, "Well, you know." Okay, there's this woman here that's singing that she enjoys pain, but she's not talking about consent. What the hell is that? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, that is such a good yeah. point because it's like I, I mean mm -hmm. I absolutely love the song. It's kind of like I mean every it, it, people were kind of and we're gonna talk about it more, but people were kind of shocked at the song, and I was like, why? There were songs like if anybody remembers how many years ago, like ten, twelve years ago, the song of um, what was it? Um, my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. And I'm just like, do you know what I mean? Nobody remembers. You know what, though? Like, I, th I think what offends them about WAP is, and I mean, we can make an entire yeah, fucking episode of how symbolic yeah, that yeah. song is. Because to me, to me personally, the daughter of Lilith, that is an anthem yes, of sexuality. Yes. That to yeah. me is, for the first time ever, I'm finally hearing a woman say, this is yeah, what I like. Yeah. And guess what? It's messy. Yeah, it's course. nasty. It's dirty. Yeah. It's it's not that I'm going to lay at the bottom very much like Lilith yeah. is like, pull my fucking yeah. hair. Choke yeah. me a little yeah. bit. You there is nothing I mean? wrong like, with that as long as it's consensual. That's the thing, you know? But that, and you mentioned that, and that's part of the research that I did, which there's a really good article. Um, and it was actually one of the first things that popped up. And this is the association between exposure to violent pornography and teen dating Ooh. violence in high school Ooh, students. Sounds like that's a good article. Yeah. All right. It was really, really good. Um, obviously, they, it was actually published uh, October 2019. Okay. Um, it is really good. And the abstract, just to read you like the quick mm -hmm. opening line is exposure to pornography in general has been linked with adolescent dating violence and sexual aggression, but less is known about exposure to violent pornography specifically. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. I think pornography yeah. should exist. I think pornography is yes. an industry and it does bring yes. the bacon. You of know what I mean? Yeah. But we cannot then forget the other aspects of society, which is you need sexual yes. education, you need comprehensive sociology lessons yes. of consent, and it needs to start yes. young. Just because you're teaching a five-year-old about consent doesn't mean that you're teaching sexual yes. things to them. And even then, I don't think it's wrong to let kids know that, yeah, you know what? Like, there is things that happen with your body later on there will be things that happen there will be things that that you will start feeling i i don't know i, I just what I, do you think carissa how I was totally, your research i totally agree with that um i think it's also i feel like a lot of parents um they feel like it's a taboo still a taboo to topic that they kind of say yeah. you know what school education they're going to take care of that kind of sexual uh education part we don't have to do you know, the work in it. And it's like, and then again, you have to ask yourself the question of when is the appropriate age to talk to your your, your children about the birds and the bees, let's say, you know, so yeah. again, it, it, it varies from like household to household. Some households say, absolutely not, we're not going to talk about it. Others say, we're going to talk about yeah. it from a very young age. And I think you made a very important point, like point is um, that we should be te teaching kids, you can teach a five year old about consent, it doesn't, ne it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to talk to them about sexual consent, but at least consent in general, what is appropriate and what is not appropriate, you know what I mean? Did it happen to you? Because here's where this is something that really fucked me up when I was reading. And this happened, I had to revisit a document that I read like four years ago. Um, if I find it, I'll send it to you because I think you'll appreciate it. In our culture, right, like the Mediterranean culture, Latin American culture, it's all about the hugging and the kissing. Very touchy-feely. We're very touchy-feely. Okay. Why do parents insist on telling you, go hug Uncle X or go kiss Aunt Blah? And you're like, to. I don't want yeah. to. And then they think, you're, I raised you better than this. You're so rude. You're so this. And it's like, no, hold up a fucking minute. 
And that actually, it's a radical feminist that wrote this, but she's like, that is actually a very passive form of sexual violence towards the bodies of minors. And I'm like, I fucking agree because kids should have the freedom of saying, Exactly. I don't want to hug you. It's it's their right. You don't you don't force a child to just because it's a uh, their auntie or their uncle or I don't know what cousin or whatever. If they don't feel like they don't feel like doing why? it, and that's it. It shouldn't be this problem of, you know, why aren't you hugging them? Like, what's wrong? It's like you know what we do. We kiss. We do this. We, you know what I mean? And it's just like, I have the right to say no from a very young age. God damn it! You know what I mean? And that's the thing. And I think that that's the problem. Pornography of anything is the highlighter of what is wrong with our society in the sense that we should be able to say, I don't like this. Stop doing it. If you are someone like, you know, women like Cardi B, women like Megan Thee Stallion. And by the way, Megan Thee Stallion, she was mocked horribly because she got shot at. Yeah. Yeah. And people were like, that's, uh, that's gaslighting. That's total Gas- gaslighting. Like, no. I'm like, excuse me. She didn't fucking yeah. ask for it, you motherfucker. Did you what the hear fuck the are words, you talking I about? asked to be shot, shoot me, please? Absolutely not. I don't, I don't, yeah. Sorry. But, no, but, no, that's it. But that's it. Sorry, I'm getting know, really fired up because that's the lexicon that we grow up with. It's like, well, she asked for it. No, she fucking didn't. Hold up a fucking minute. No, she didn't. She, nothing. Don't don't connect the song exactly. with what happened to her. Like that has two different yeah. places and time. The fact is, is that black women are subjected more to more yes. violence than and any that other actually, women. I found that in my, um, in my research, actually. I, I, I read up about that also. Um, yeah. It came up. Um, but one of the other things also mentioning, you know, about the right to say no from a, a young age, I don't want to kiss Uncle Johnny over here, whatever. Um, one of the things is also, do you remember growing up that thing that they would say that, um, you know, as a symbol that somebody likes you, a little boy likes you, he'll be violent with you. He'll push you. He'll pull your hair. He'll, uh, yeah. he'll pinch you. Oh he'll rope at you, whatever. And it's a sign yeah. of, oh, he likes you. It's just boys being boys. So fucking lutely not. And this is where that age of consent, that consent education and what is appropriate and not appropriate. It's like, oh, so basically if somebody likes me, he can, he or she will just put it like can smack me around because it's a sign of love. And we're kind of. That yeah. it's disgusting. And it also, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it links to, sorry, let me it's take my good. notes out because. <laughs> Such a such a I'm such a nerd. I'm like I have to look for the, also the whole out. thing of how the percentages <laughs> that I brought up to because I'm I'm so I know I knew that you were gonna bring the statistics home, so I was like I'll let I'll leave that to her. But there's a strong link with that that you just mentioned. So the fact that you know you are forced from a young age to go hug X, go kiss X, your no doesn't you are rude if you say no. So you have to be complacent, right? So that's a key word for the audience, the complacency, the passiveness. Then there's that fact that you just brought up, right? Which is um, also linked to, I would assume, a form of sexual violence um, as well. And then the, the, the fact that boys... You know, boys will be boys. They don't know how to tell you they and like you. So they'll that? pull your hair and they'll push you. To... Whose fault is that, like, that boys are, 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 are not all, showing their emotions in any way, shape or form? I, for the record, audience, a guy that's in, who's in touch with his feelings is like probably the sexiest thing ever. That is hot. That honestly gets me. That yep. gives me a full walk. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. like. That's like hot shit. I'm sorry. Like it is really fucking hot that you can talk to. I'm saying it from a heterosexual perspective, but I'm assuming, you know, speaking from any, I'm not going to speak for, for my friends who are not heterosexual, but having someone in your life tell you that they're comfortable with their feelings or that they're trying to be comfortable with their feelings, fucking hot. Absolutely. Keep them in your life. But in pornography, there's a thing about women calling men Ooh. daddy. <laughs> a 
it's but I think it's so fucking creepy. It's like mm, daddy, and I'm no, like, Ew. I don't really want to. That's oh, not right. That's, that's, I cringe. That's a bit cringe worthy. The whole also calling it like zaddy and stuff like that, and you're like, ah. I think I think the word zaddy <laughs> is hilarious. <laughs> I think that's fucking hilarious, but it is. It actually links, and it says it. Um, Fuck, I forgot to reference it, but it actually, guys, we can publish the references that we use later. Like I'm more than happy to put them together and you guys can check them out. Um, that's the teacher in me. But it's that association of the, the father has the power and therefore you have a father figure who's giving it to you. Right, like that is the term. Like, yeah, daddy, give it to me. <laughs> That's and it's true. Like, though. It's cringeworthy. It's just cringeworthy. I'm just like, oh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. give oh, you what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it usually is some really violent scenes. And again, there's a dis. I want to make a distinction here. There's a difference between the WAP song saying, "This is what I like," because Carissa already mentioned it. That's consent. Also, don't forget that Cardi B, I don't know if Megan the Stallion was, but Cardi B was as an exotic dancer. She was, I don't know, I don't know if I want to call her a sex worker, but if she, oh I am pro sex every, work, pro ho, pro everything. So, so she has mm -hmm. that ability of dealing yeah, with the shadiest of, of the shades. And then at the same time, you have Megan the Stallion, who I think actually has a bachelor degree like she she did a business yeah. degree something she's brilliant like she's actually really fucking smart yeah. and it shouldn't surprise me because well, she thing, is yeah it's one of those <laughs> but, things though isn't it like when we see successful women who are in touch with their sexual well their sexuality or or, or just with, with sex in yeah. general and whether they be rappers or whatever career, I mean, whatever their career is or was, or, you know, whatever, um, yeah. you know, um, I feel like a lot of people feel like, oh, but she must be like stupid. She must lack of lack intelligence. She must, you know, so when people come out with things like, oh, but she actually has a BA in psychology or she has whatever, like she has some kind of education. Yeah. People are so shocked, yeah. you know, because it's like. And you're rapping about what? And it's like, what's wrong with what's wrong with. I don't see the what's wrong with that. You know, if she wants to be rapping about whatever she wants to be rapping with, she could still have an education. I don't see why. Well, that's the thing. And let's not forget that people, and this is just like a little side note because of this, but Cardi B has always encouraged women and men to have a business class. They're like, fucking know how to sell yourself. Nicki Minaj always telling people stay in school. Um, do you remember the song Missy Elliott song? The Missy Elliott song. Um, oh my God! It was the, the most common one. The one about oh, her oh I know one of yes. Um, <laughs> I say yes. I remember God, and I'm like such a Missy Elliott fan. I'm gonna spank my, oh my God, shit, but I know I even got one of my tattoos. <laughs> one of her songs. Shit, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Work. Is it, it work it? Yes, it is it work, has to be it. work it. Yes. It. To me, that was the first anthem of women wanting sex. It was like, I want this, and this is what I'm gonna do because I'm not actually gonna like take care of yeah. my nether regions You're because it like a vulture. You know, I, need I to remember see like <laughs> I'm getting the lyrics <laughs> like coming to me, and I'm like, oh, I love that song. I love uh, it. Yeah, but that was poetry. It's kind of like Cardi B's going like, touch the dingly thing in the back of my throat. I'm like. That is some fucking Shakespeare shit. That is that is Shakespeare right there, and he would be proud. But yeah, it goes, you know, to bring it back to violence. These are women who have experienced violence. These are women who have seen probably shittier things that you and I will ever probably imagine. And then we have porn. So what say you? What is your opinion, Carissa? Do you think pornography encourages well, I, violence I, and i did some some research as well in in looking at category well not cat look not look watching porn but just looking at lists of and stuff like that um do i think that it has at hand i think we as a society again cannot make the distinction of looking at something subjectively and then for the purpose of arousal you know we can't like i mean many of us cannot make that distinction you and I, we clearly can look at porn subjectively 
And we know there, there's a time and a yeah. place, let's say, for its usage of however we want to use it, you know, for research sake, I'm not going to be getting turned on by anything, actually, by it, you know what I mean, by the porn that I'm watching. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think to someone who, let's say, you know, a eight year old or a 10 year old or 15 year old, even for that matter, who's clicking around, and then all of a sudden, there's this pop up, hot girls, I don't know what can pop up and they go click into it. And then they go into a rabbit hole of God knows what. Yeah. Um, like you said, porn serves its purpose. But I think it, de- it, uh, yeah. it depends at what age. And it depends how you view it. Um, an eight year old who's going to mm-hmm. see this who's going to, I don't know, see two people, they might not understand what they're actually watching, although eight-year-olds would surprise you. (laughs) Um, Especially today's eight-year-old, where you're like, what the fuck? Uh, Well, yeah. Um, But in the sense of, you know, they're seeing a man that's being extremely aggressive with a woman, pushing her head down, making her gag, her to the point of where she's choking, throwing up, slapping her around, is going to... Subconsciously, kind of ingest that, or un- I don't know. Yeah, like is going to ingest that and think, well, maybe that is normal. That is what is expected, you know. Now, it's, now I see that, and yeah, I'll be like, absolutely not. You know what I mean? Because again, there was a, also within my research, I saw things of like we don't know. Okay, we don't know if these women in the porn industry or men or whatever um, are consenting to this. We don't know if they are victims of sex trafficking. We don't know the backstories of it. There's a, there's a whole thing. There's so many, there's so many questions to ask when you're actually watching porn. We don't know what's happening. Is it a kind of revenge porn? Because there's that thing too of revenge porn. And I was actually reading that it's, it's, well, it's on, it's been on the rise, especially uh, within the LGBTQ plus community. It's on the rise, this revenge porn. Um, so again, there's so many questions to ask when we're, yeah. when we're innocently, innocently clicking, let's say, and we don't know the backstory of, of this production company or these actors, or okay, unless they have like, you know, you know, what, there's just so much like you have to research all this stuff to actually say, yeah, yeah, okay, no, sure. these are people, this is their profession, this is their work, this is their career, and they are consenting to this, you know, but then there's other stuff, maybe like amateur porn, because like we said in, in previous episode, or, or the first episode, it's easy to, mm-hmm. to, to, to take your camera and film yourself. Now, does that mean that the person that's, uh, doing or performing these sexual acts or anything is it consensual does that person know you're you have a camera what's happening again so it's all these questions no i i agree and and my thing with with you know saying a statement obviously and this is me i mean this is my mercury and burger right like it's like this extra analysis of language First That's and foremost, one of the what do we like, consider oh, yeah. violence? What do we consider? And you know, what I mean, like to me, violence could be very different to some extent to what one of my twenty-year-old, you know, former students thinks, because they grew up with technology. Like we have to, for, we have to remember that you and I were, we have right. seen the internet. The dial to, like, what was the dial-up like, internet that we used? To- <laughs> Hey, yeah. The dialogue, yeah, AOL, <laughs> Nap, yeah, 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 Netscape, all that shit, yeah. And obviously, pornography back then were just stills. It was just like pictures. You know what I mean? And now, and I go back to this point that I think we talked about on the first episode. The people who did porn, well, look at Ron Jeremy. Like he's got like thirty. You Ron know, Jeremy, of of rape, Lord, he's like the seventh. You know, for those of you who don't know, Ron Jeremy is a very famous porn star from the 1970s. Very, I mean, at the time where yeah, body yeah. hair was all the rage for both, well, men and women, let's say, but he was extremely, extremely yeah. hairy. And you've actually seen him probably in, um, what was that video? Fuck. He was in a, a video. Oh, my God. I don't remember anyway, but he's he's featured in one of these like famous videos by um, the guys who did. Uh, what? Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. But you, if we show you a picture, you'll know who Ron Jeremy. 
Yeah, you'll know who Ron Jeremy is. And Ron Jeremy right now is on trial for, you know, sexual assault. And again, in the 70s, mm-hmm. these these same artists, Ron Jeremy being accused mm-hmm. of sexual assault, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these same actors are now saying that the porn that we have access to yes. would have been considered snuff. They were like that. That was something we would have never even proposed because that wasn't what we wanted. Like they were into the orgies and like, like you said, the body hair. And it was a little bit more erotic. Like it was a little bit more like 1970s with our bodies kind of thing. There was a bit of a story. I mean, right. There was a a storyline that you could kind of sort of... But now they, and, and a lot of them have come out and a lot of them have said what we have access to now, we would have been thrown in jail for indecency or for, you know, violence. And my thing is, it is okay, great. So pornography is here to stay. Fantastic. What are the regu- like, I would, I would love to speak to a porn lawyer, media, like a porn, lawyer that defends in general, the like, porn yeah, yeah. industry. Yeah, like why how do you protect the workers because it's also falling under the category mm-hmm. of violence against the worker but there's no porn unions so do you know what i mean like where does this violence come from and the thing my problem is is how we digest it in our daily life because pornography yeah. is not just on pornhub i turn on the tv and i will see the pornification of an ad I will turn on the, you know, I'll turn on one of these like teen movies back in the 90s, right? And holy shit, like they fucking sexualized 15 and 16 year olds. And it's like, now that I am a 37 year old woman looking at this, I'm like, this is revolting. Like, hold up a minute, let kids be kids. Like, let them discover themselves. Like, we should be giving them the safe environment to do so. And now we have kids sending nudes because somewhere along the line, young boys and maybe even young girls Mm -hmm. feel entitled to your nudity and they feel like they must coerce you. And by the way, coercion is violence. It is a form of violence. They need to coerce you to show, to invade your body in a visual way. And the thing is, is that the internet has affected that. Like, I think that access to these pictures, to Instagram, to, and I'm not blaming these platforms. What I'm saying is, it's so difficult now to kind of be like, okay, great, no, this, no, yep, okay, how do we monitor this? And it comes down to teaching them about this shit. Like, we cannot hide it under the rug anymore. Or sp- Education in itself is kind of very lacking in the sense of it's falling behind the times. I feel like you're teaching the same shit that you taught twenty to a yeah. certain. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can't Good again. Point. I can't say all school like you know, um, all schools across the world or whatever. But I feel that they're not coming. They're not coming of age in the sense of they're still teaching things twenty years ago. Okay, but twenty years ago in a way like um, yeah. the internet kind of started and stuff like that. Let's say you know. Um, and it's, well, yeah, yes, because it was mm-hmm. at the time I think of MySpace and stuff like that in a way. So it was the beginning of, but in the sense of, I feel like education is falling behind. And so, um, a, a lot of kids, their primary education is Instagram or a lot of social media, you know, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, this, that. So what they're seeing, like you said, is all these images, you know, being pushed forward to them, these ads, these, uh, whatever it might be, because in every industry, let's say, it's kind of become sexualized. The sex sells. Every industry, whether it be the food, whether it be beauty, whether it's just, and, it's, it's just, that's what sells. And this is where it gets really tricky because there's an article here uh, by the Washington Post published on, uh, let me see, May 27th, 2016 by Julia Long. And it is called Pornography is More Than Just Sexual Fantasy. Mm-hmm. It's cultural violence. And it's an opinion, it's an opinion piece. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's not going to be impartial. Um, 
but I, there was a lot of shit that I agreed with. I was like, yeah, but again, what did come first? Like pornography pushing the envelope or was it society kind of becoming a little bit more lax and saying, you know what sells a 16 year old wearing a red lipstick sucking on a banana. And it's like, with what came first. And I think that if you're being subjected Mm -hmm. to visual images that not offend you in the Karen way, not like I'm offended by what you said, but actually honestly disturbs you. And you're like, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with this. It isn't that a form of assault towards you as well. Like I don't feel comfortable seeing teenagers. Also programs on, well, I don't watch TV anymore, but when I used to uh, on, on certain channels, you know what TLC, I'm calling you out um, where Mm -hmm. they have toddlers and tiaras. And then there's the whole thing of like that, that beauty pageant, that's something else also, but beauty pageants for toddlers where you're putting makeup, you're making them look older. You've got three year olds that are, you just, I mean, I'm sorry. It's kind of like, what are you, what are you showing us? First of all, a three, in my opinion, a three year old should not be wearing makeup, Mm -hmm. should not be wearing makeup. I mean, you know, it's like, what the hell are you doing? You're sexualizing a toddler. You're sex. And then, it's it's there's there's lines being crossed and there are some that are saying it's unacceptable such as myself with that you know and then there's others who are like oh no but it's just you know for fun what the hell are you talking about you know like whoa wait what fun are you serious yeah i yeah and but that's and that's the thing though like the sexual the sexualization Mm -hmm. who is sexualizing whom this is the thing because I was wearing, you know, obviously my mom would never let me step out with makeup, but yes. I didn't, didn't understand why she wasn't letting why. me step out with makeup. Yes. Now I understand. It's you have no exactly. business being sexualized by other people. So who cuz I don't think makeup is bad. Yeah. I think that kids should it's yeah. kind of like painting on a canvas like bleh. and if you see yeah. a child yeah, putting makeup is. on themselves, it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like lipstick on the hair and like powder on like their mat and you're just like this is a mess but who's sexualizing who and then i want to know who sexualized violence i want to know because there's a saying that we have right like between love and hate there's a thin line did someone say oh yeah between you know what actually between pleasure and pain there's a thin line a little bit of pain now and then and it's like okay great but okay you know But that's the thing. Again, some people feel comfortable with that and other people want nothing to do with it. Who is sexualizing what for us? Are our sexual desires ours or did someone tell us that that is how we should feel? And violence, who decided Mm -hmm. for us what is violent and what isn't? And when do we personally decide this is my boundary And I think that that's part of the reason why a lot of people have issues with boundaries. And that's my issue with pornography. There should be boundaries, like almost like tears. You know what I mean? Like, look, if this is your thing, this is what you look for. And I think that that's genuinely what happens. But nothing is stopping a 25-year-old going to his boyfriend or girlfriend's house and saying, hey, I I watched a video. Let me Mm -hmm. show this to you. And they think it's nothing. When we talked about this, when people filter into your DMs and they show you images and you're kind of like, I didn't fucking want to see this shit. So who do we blame? If there is any blame to go around or do we just need to take a step back and reflect and say, well, what the fuck? Like, what are we creating? A billion dollar industry. If there was no demand for such sexual acts Mm. or such violent sexual acts then there wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't exist because we 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 wouldn't there just wouldn't be a supply of it because there wouldn't be a demand so it's all supply and demand but i think also the the thing is that you know let's say with the 60s came the sexual revolution you know the introduction of 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 contraception for women so you could have Mm -hmm. you know you didn't have that worry although they would call you a slut and god knows what for taking you know 
they still do they still do of course yeah. um and they still, still do that we're not going to get into that but anyway <laughs> like in the sense of because that's a whole that's a whole can of worms right <laughs> there but in the sense of um i find that with time where people started exploring more feeling more liberated compared to their parents you know that came before them where it was like you you you, you you had sex to to procreate kind of thing and that's it you know what i mean and then you this there was this boom in society yeah, where it was yeah, like no yeah, yeah. be free be who you want to be fuck who you want to fuck excuse me um you know um enjoy you know enjoy yourselves you're you're yeah, allowed no, yeah. to have an orgasm because before it was like god forbid that a woman has an orgasm kind of thing you know what i mean um but, but that is still contended do you know what i mean like the fact that and i think that that is and this is why I brought up WAP, because the reaction that men had, particularly men, women were immediate in shaming them. Look at these whores. Look at the sluts. They're not examples. They're not women of. And I'm like, shut yeah, the fuck yeah. up. I don't know what that kind of internalized yeah. misogyny you've got going on, but you need to work on that, sister. Um, but the men, the men were furious it's there was one meme that actually just caught it all. I'll, I'll try to get it um, right now, but there was one particular meme that was. It says this: Men, I like to have sex with women. Also, men, women who like to have sex are hoes. Same men. Why don't these bitches yes, want yes. to fuck me? So it's like the mixed messages, right? Next, men. I like fun and filthy sex. Women, I too like fun and filthy sex. Men, nah, see, I want a woman who doesn't like fun and filthy sex, and I want to convince her to do what I like just to please me. Right, women, wait, did you, do you actually like women? Men, I like fun and filthy sex. Next one, women. I enjoy fun and filthy sex and expect to also receive the sexual pleasure I provide. Men, you're a whore and a bitch. Fuck you. That's misogyny. That encapsulates oh, everything that is... that is violence against. And that's the thing because we have to, and I'm going to, again, heteronormalize this. You have the men who do want to please the women. Like they're just like, what do you like? Because I never really, yeah. again, those are the kind of dudes that you kind of want to hold on to the men who are willing to put the effort in, because if you are one of those lucky rare unicorns that have wow. great mind blowing sex the first time, <laughs> I mean, listen, <laughs> like, that's amazing. But usually the first couple of times you're kind of like, that's, I don't like that. Or mm, I love that. Those are the men that want their, to grow. Themselves. And they're in touch with themselves. Know what's they're in going touch on. with and their feminine side. They're I in think touch with everything. Their emotions and everything. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right. But then you have these fuckers. And I think these are the people who genuinely fuel this industry of hurting women, yelling at women, bitches, hoes, whatever. Um, if you don't succumb to their... I mean, if, if you don't succumb to their advances, then they start getting a bit nasty. Like, you're such a bitch. You're such a this. You're such a, yes, you're such a tease. You're such a this. You're, I I'm mean, violent. I could say it happened to me in Geneva where I was walking down. I was walking home and it was it was a busy Saturday oh. night, but I was on the phone. And I remember there was like cars that uh, they, it was at a red light. So they stopped and stuff like that. And they started cat calling me. I was talking on the phone and I said in French, Va faire tout connard, like, go fuck yourself fucking moron kind of thing and i remember this guy literally yeah. starting to open his door and he started calling me bitch slut this that. and th like luckily you know yeah. first of all it was like a, a a street full of people but us also like it turned into a green light so other people started beeping at him to move now if i was alone it would have turned very violent. I mean, it would have turned pretty violent, you know, but again, it was that this cat calling. So you're insulting me by cat calling me as if I'm, I don't know what, a bit, well, basically like a dog and you're cat calling me and whatever. And, and you're expecting me to think that this is respectful. So you're expecting me to have a positive reaction to you cat calling me. No, I'm going to have a very aggressive reaction. You're a cunt. 
fuck you. You know what I mean? And, and, but that's, first of all, it's fucking shit that you have to deal with that. Um, here, obviously, when you get catcalled, like, I've had to tell, I've had to, you know, the conversations I've had with female students is like, yeah. Mind you, these are 15, 16 year old kids, children, not young women, children. Okay. Um, but it happens that you walk down a construction site and all of a sudden they start whistling and then they start yelling and then well, they start saying shit. And the thing is, is like, it's porn. a fucking construction site. And, but that's exactly it. And then the, and it's like a gangbang and she loves it. And it's kind of like, no, because in my context, that is a femicide waiting to happen. In my context, that's how women in this world could end up dead. Yeah, because they're we're not talking expecting, back, they're expecting we're for us to comply as they see, as society in a way has kind of ingrained and instilled into them that no, women mm -hmm. are supposed to enjoy these things, so do it. So God forbid if a woman like says something back or just you know pretends not to hear or whatever, it can, like you said, turn very violent. Yeah. My issue with pornography with that is that I never see women being violent to men. It's always on a BDSM environment where she's like the dominatrix, but that's a role. That is the role that you play. And, um, and usually she's, yeah. if you are a true yes. BDSM, it's about giving them pleasure in ways that consented. it's they would normally it's, think that it's shameful. So well. that, you know what I mean? There's the safe words you talk like a professional dog. Exactly. You're obviously going to talk to them about what your word is, like, what are you okay with, etc. Yeah, 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 absolutely. However, in pornography, we have had, you know, rumors that people don't respect the safe word that people still push it. Um, because you're under contract. And that's the thing. So my issue is, is like, okay, pornography, I think you serve a purpose. I think that you're here to stay. Could you, if you, if you're really going to do this violence shit, I dare you to do a violent porn like you do of men gangbanging a woman, vice versa. Have women be violent to men. And see how fucking quick you will see men being like, how fucking dare you? This is offensive. What kind of pussy would let himself be treated this way? Because obviously, if you are a male sexual victim, uh, I mean, you're a male victim of sexual abuse, you're a coward. Like, of that's course, the, I mean, that's women the thing, can't and that's why you. there's so many men uh, who yes, do not can. come forward. <laughs> Yes. You know, to, to because there's this yeah. stigma carried around. Well, what kind of man are you? Like, how could you have let this happen to you? And it's like, can we stop victim shaming and all this bullshit and be proper, have properly trained professionals within like police force and all this thing, make it safe for whoever is a victim of sexual assault, go and feel safe and say, you know what? Yes, this happened to me, regardless of what they identify themselves as or what not. Can we just make it a safe space and stop the victims? Well, what were you do? Also, well, this goes for women also, like, what were you wearing? How many yeah. drinks did you have? What were you saying to the person? You know, because they do that, that whole thing of, well, you asked for it, you know? And with men, it's like, well, you're a pussy. How could you let that happen? That's not possible. And it's like, what the hell? Are you shitting me? Yeah, but I think, so here's the thing, because if I looked yeah. at pornography as a text, of course, it's an image, it's a text, it conveys a meaning. Um, and I compare it to the vernacular that we use with victims. It's the same. It's, it's almost like they're taking notes from each other in the sense that you have pornography telling you that the woman wants it, so you have to give it to her. And then in real life, the woman is not asking for it at all. Um, and so therefore you have a system implemented that yes. fully dedicates yeah. itself to gaslighting the survivor. And that is exactly what the industry, and I'm calling it an industry because it is, it's a billion dollar industry. 
Um, and again, like, I don't know what links they have to sex trafficking. I don't know what money they are giving to the mob. I don't know what, you know, what promises they have with course, the leaders of the world. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that there's some really weird shit floating around that we don't see. And I'm sure, and that's what Trump, so there was a quote from somebody who used to work at a company. And I don't remember which one, and I don't want to out them because it's kind of loaded. It's a loaded statement. And it was basically, so to paraphrase what it says, um, he or she, I really don't know. It was like an anonymous source. They were like, if you think that the pornography that you have access to is the worst that there is, you would be surprised of how you would be horrified to see. Well, there's the, the other dark porn web that doesn't make it that exists into for mainstream such purposes. Also, I mean, you know, yeah, I know, and that's something that I don't have any interest in. Like that just sounds yes. like a fucking dark rabbit hole that I, I'm horrified. Um. And then again, it's just this, it almost makes, and another form of, of violence, it almost wants to normalize yes. pedophilia. Ooh, sorry. Ooh, sorry. Like um, barely Well, 18. that's what I was, I just pulled up this like, and it just kind of went down to it. It says the United States, hold on. It says the United States produces 55% of child pornography globally. 55%. And here, and like you said, like it's, uh, oh, and knowing God. what we know about neutral, okay, blah, blah, blah. It's logical to believe that porn focusing on barely legal women and there we talk about like you know how it like takes a turn to the sinister and all this yeah. and like how the consumer is basically de de we're the thing is that we're desensitized i feel like as a society we've we've not that we've seen it all because like we said there's stuff that doesn't make mainstream there's stuff that you know is kept very you yeah. know whatever but i feel like we as a whole have become so desensitized because we are such a pornified society you can look at a, at a, at a, a bk ad I, I remember doing this or something i don't yeah. remember for what episode but um and it was mm -hmm. so it was so sexual i don't know yeah it's the woman with the burger with the and it says yeah and it nothing her away. like in the sense of it didn't and this was years ago that i saw it but like yeah and I saw it maybe a few months ago again, and I was like, like holy shit, what are, they, mm -hmm. what are they portraying here? Like, it finally clicked, and it goes to show you how desensitized and how normalized this is. Yeah, I mean, the ads that we have, and I, and I analyzed some of them for, you know, the subject that we do, which is, uh, there's one by, his last name is Quinn, and he is you know, a British um, sort of designer for like high-end suits. So it's somebody like, it, the suits that someone like Lucifer would wear or, you know, John Hammond, Mad Men would wear. Like that's really elite, really elegant. And there's an image, uh, one of the photographies, and I was shocked because the photography itself, like the, the contrast of the photography, the texture of the photography, impeccable. Like that, they got themselves the best photographer that they could. But it's a woman killed on the hood of a car and a tie on her neck and he's pulling her kind of like, and he's looking at the camera with a smirk and he's just going like, look at what I've just done. And I'm like, this is violence. Like this, this is violence. And the girl, by the way, you don't see her face. There's a blood patch coming from her hair and she's in her underwear. And I'm like, how degrading is this? And I think a lot of my problem with talking about these things is that a lot of teenagers, a lot of young men look at this and they go, it's kind of hot. And then a lot of girls think, oh, that, that's what I have to exactly. do. And that's why I'm like, exactly. no, you don't have to do shit. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do, number one. And number two, to kind of like bring it full circle with this, there was, I don't know if you've seen it on Instagram, there's a girl who survived a horrible rape. And um, I honestly, I don't know her name. I don't think she published her name, but she made a reel. And she's like, basically she's like, I went online with my story about my survival of rape. 
the first comments that she got, you're too ugly to be raped. You should be grateful. Yeah, you should be grateful that a man was willing to have sex with you. And I'm like, so again, the, my issue with porn as well, which is a subtle sort of violent act towards people is you need to look artificial and really sexy to be fuckable. You know, like that has been my yeah, issue since yeah. episode one. It's this idea of if you're not fuckable, you're not worthy. Mm-hmm. And so average people, right? This girl who comes out with this horrific story and the first couple of comments are, you're too ugly to be raped. Like rape is not about attraction. I think the thing is that, you know, and again, this all comes back to like the whole society and advertising and, and whatnot. And again, how it's ingrained in us is that we're selling you these things you know, you're, we're, we're telling you that you're ugly. Hence, we're selling you this product to make you more beautiful. Um, since women started making their own damn money, yeah. you know, especially during wars and stuff like that, where women entered the workforce, they had their own money. They didn't like have to rely on men because men were all fighting and whatever. And we're talking about, you know, like World War One, And and it's like a way of saying, ooh, well, women are starting to have money. What yeah, are yeah. To, to make them believe that is wrong with them. Oh, we're going to start telling them that they're ugly, that this is a flaw and this is a flaw and this is a flaw. So they, they can start like, you know, so I think I feel with those kind of comments that it's the thing of, and this is how the porn industry, it kind of seeped into the porn industry is because it started from just advertising in it, you know, and that, you know, you'll be beautiful if you have yeah, shaved yeah, this yeah, and you'll course. be beautiful if you have a shaved that. And if you, whatever it might be. Um, and I feel like, so then, that was instilled in us, you know, from a very long time ago, from advertising in magazines and whatnot. And then it kind of porn was like, oh, yeah. let's take yeah. that into because this is what they they know. This is what they've been fed for years. And we're going to put it into our um, industry as well. And I think that people don't understand how violent that actually is. I don't think people understand the level of violence that it is to tell someone you're not attractive. I'm going to repeat it for those who didn't hear it in the back. It is a violent act to tell someone that they have to fit a certain look to be considered attractive. I said what I said, and I don't apologize. And the thing with this is is that these women in, in the porn industry or in, even in, in Hollywood acting and, and this idea that you have to look a certain way, it's violence towards your body, it's violence towards your culture, yeah. it's violence towards your yeah. ethnicity when people tell you you're a little bit too yeah. black. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't look Latina enough. Like what the fuck is Latina enough? Like that's not even a race. Like what are what what are you guys talking about? You know? And My issue is, and the reason why I had a lot of conflict doing this specific topic is because it triggered me in pretty much every single area. It's the fact that you're consistently told that you are not attractive. It's consistently being told that because you demand pleasure, but you're not, quote unquote, considered the stereotype of beauty then you don't deserve to ask for pleasure. It's the fact that when women like Cardi B and Megan the Stallion come out and say, you know what? Choke me, spit, like I don't care, whores. And I'm glad the positive note on this is that I think a lot of women and a lot of men are actually now going, this is bullshit. Like this this fucking narrative of you telling me that I have to look this way and I have to act a certain way is bullshit. I think at a certain point we're gonna we're we're tired of all looking the same. It's the same thing, like the same thing. You got to have the perfect tits. You got to be completely waxed, shaved, yeah. fucked, this, that, whatever. You have to have the six pack. You have to have the perfect ass, the perfect glutes, the perfect this. And it's like people are just like, no, no. And I think it's starting to like seep in also the thing of like I'm not built like everyone else and everyone is unique and everyone is beautiful in their own unique way. You don't have to fit a stereotype enough with that narrative. It's bullshit. And it's made to, it's kind of um, enslaving you. 
enough no, I agree judging with that. of the I, outside I, because I, this is just, it's not even scratching the surface. Just by somebody, you're judging somebody by their appearance. There's so much more to that, to that person. You don't know their story. You don't know their battles. You don't know whatever. And that's what makes a person beautiful and unique and just worthy, you know? That. You know, but then you have like, fuck, and I wish that we had more time to talk about this. Um, maybe we should do a part two. But, you know, you had actresses like Sasha Gray. You had actresses like Pam Anderson. You had actresses like um, Jenny, oh, what was her call? What was her name? Jameson. She was like the porn Jameson. queen in the 90s. Jenna Jameson. Um, yeah. Jameson. Yeah. Jenna Jameson. Jenna yeah. Jameson. Yeah. I mean, by the way, all white women. Um, yes, <laughs> that's, that's how tell that, that should tell you how varied porn is. Um, did they've all come out with horrific stories about sexual violence? And I'm just like, and Jen, and I remember this interview with Jenna Jameson and she was just like, you have to be a really fucking tough bitch to make it in the porn industry. And she, she did, she became like a multimillion empire yeah. herself. And I think, but that's the thing. It's just like, I feel mm. like the violent narrative of pornography that tells you women should be submissive yeah. is kind of forgetting that women are the ones that bring in the money. You know what I mean? People, the, the majority yes, of yes. That's what I read also the viewers my... are heterosexual white men who thrive, you know, who thrive in watching this. They're not there to watch dudes. They're there to watch the women. So all of a sudden when women realize that, Hey, you know what? There's money in sex. sex like prostitutes is, is there's mean, money in sex work. guys. Like I'm going to do it. And, and um, why should we degrade it? Something that like, so basically work. we're doing it for free, let's say, <laughs> but once somebody does it for profit, it's like, Oh, you fucking whore. Well, fuck you. Seriously. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, and it's the, you know, it's the whole thing of like, um, a lot of, you know, only oh, yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Have you heard of only fans? <laughs> and, it started with, okay, it, it, it grew in popularity since uh -huh. COVID and like lockdown yeah. and a lot of like these porn um, uh, uh, porn a actors and actresses like started using it as a means to bring in money, you know, and then other people started using it as well. I don't care if you're a lawyer or whatever. And it's not only about yeah. sex on yeah. OnlyFans. People do it also for health tips, this, that. There's tons of other things. But in the sense of um, it, start, it was another means to get money. Because yeah. guess what? The world got went into lockdown and we couldn't produce whatever and this and that. So we used it to our advantage, this platform, this kind of, in a, dare I say, social media kind of. But we go back to that narrative of women are not allowed to claim sex. Women are not allowed to. And that's a violent act. Denying women the right to their sexuality. Denying homosexual men the right to their sexuality or women or the, anybody in the LGBTQIA community. I'm sorry, it's an act of violence. That's it. And the thing is, is that like you mentioned with making profit out of out of sex, it's like, well, when somebody says, we'll suck my dick, I charge $55. It's like, and they get offended. I don't know. I don't understand why you're offended. Like, seriously, like you. <laughs> it's a service. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Because it's not going to be pleasurable for me. It's going to be a job. So <laughs> I don't care if you. I feel like I don't care if you bust it in five minutes. Or I feel like there's um. I feel like sometimes we're making huge progress. You know, when it comes to certain areas. Um, and we did uh, compared to like what it was a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago for women. Okay, well, you know, there's still a lot to to. There's still a lot of progress to be made, obviously, because we got to change the way society perceives certain things, which it's like a struggle right there. Um, but in the sense of, I feel like sometimes with these kind of fucking comments, I feel like we're, we're back 60, yeah. 70, 80, 90, a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, where it's just like, are we, are, so what, what do you want from us? You want us to basically shut our mouths, accept everything you give to us, not have pleasure from it, not make our own money. We have to rely on you for everything. You want us to just shut the fuck up and stay in your corner kind of thing. And it's like, but don't you, don't you think that that is basically how people remain in control? Like that's all about power. It's, it's all this mirage of power. And the thing is, is like, what scares me is the fact that 
the porn industry owners and you know that it is like an oligarchy like you know that it is like a couple of families owning it and like it's dark like it's fucking dark i'm sure um they're like let them think <laughs> let those like pawns think that they're in control uh let them have their rants and eventually we will profit out of what they're asking for they want to see chubby women great let's give them chubby women oh you want to see tattooed uh broads let's give it let's empower women by like you know really selling them the idea that they have to be naked in order to make profit uh we did that with britney spears she was 16 and men wanted to fuck her they did that with natalie portman in the professional natalie portman should have never been sexualized she was a fucking 12 year old when she was doing the professional it is and the the, the new york times actually and she talks about this um was like she's untalented if only she could just pose pretty because she's beautiful and i'm just like she's a fucking 13 year old like what the fuck are you Remember talking with about Brooke shields and, and this was it. back in the seventies with the ad that she, what was it? I don't even remember for who it was, what jean company. Yeah. I don't remember anyway. And she posed, she was, she was what? Four, 15, 14, 15. Anyway, she was underage and she's posing. With, mm -hmm. Yeah. She, she's a kid and she's posing braless, mm -hmm. but like she has like, you know, this kind of uh, jean top, but it's like, you know, opened and whatnot uh, posing suggestively. And you have also the Blue Lagoon also that's sexualizing children because they are children, basically. I mean, it was barely legal. How old yeah. was she in that movie, Brooke Shields? I don't know. I want to say 17. Like, she turned 18 on the set. I think the story is that she turned 18 on the set once it finished production. Something, I may be confusing her with somebody else, but yeah. And that movie was like... Exactly, that's the thing. And it's sexualizing okay, children. Again, you know, taking of advantage of it. Two kids. And <laughs> it's again this thing of like... Uh, in, and it's like the whole Britney Spears thing and stuff like that. And people thinking, ooh, barely, barely legal. And No, it started from 20 years before that. You know, 30 years before that. Well, 20 years before that. In the 70s, let's say, when yeah. we started sexualizing kids, basically. You know, and so... And you saw the, the detrimental effects it had on Britney Spears, the pressure that she was put under. And it's it's all the other artists. It's not only her, but she's a classic example. In 2007, she lost her shit. And everybody chose to make fun of her. And that's honestly something that I still fucking no. get livid about. Because this is, again, part of the narrative that we have. Look at whenever you have a reaction or whenever, you know, me as a, as a teacher, right? When somebody says like, oh my God, she's so crazy. Or, oh my God, she's bipolar. Just because someone didn't, for example, right? Like someone may not have turned in their work and I talk to them in one way, but I address the, the class in a different way. It's like, first and foremost, it's inaccurate. That's not a symptom of bipolarity. Second of all, you're doing a massive disservice to everyone who does have that. Because what if, what if who you're saying it about actually does have a mental illness? Yeah. What, what, why can't you take responsibility of your fucking actions? Do you know what I mean? Like it's this narrative of Britney Spears went fucking crazy. Let's buy the magazine or look at this porn artist. Oh my God, she was raped. Well, she works in the porn industry. She can't be raped. What? It's one of these things of, again, like, just because you chose, you choose to sh portray yourself in a certain way or speak in it. And we, we talked about this also uh, speak in a certain way, be open about a certain thing. And then, you know, which then yeah, people yeah. Um, find that they're entitled to, I don't know, whether they call you crazy or they say you're a whore, you're a bitch. Well, let me send them unsolicited, whatever kind of pictures. Let's have unsolicited talks about yeah. their sexual fantasies or this, that, and whatever. And it's like, what the fuck? why are you? And it's, it's basically, it's it, like you said, it's a form it's of disgusting. violence right there. It is a form of violence. It's a form of violence. And again, I think this is also where it's one of those things that. It is a hundred percent. And again, guys, yeah, sorry. It's like, it's not, no, we're not no, saying no. when you're talking to your significant other and you're talking about fantasies, that's not what we're talking about. It's unsolicited. Like we're having, Hey, how was your morning? Great. I had a fantasy about you. Wait, no, don't keep that. To, keep that to yourself. I don't want to like, talk about it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. 
that's yeah, that, you know. So yes, like again, it's like the context <laughs> that we're talking about here. It's just, you know, but in the sense of, and again, it's, yeah. I think the, one of the most important things is education, but it has to come, it, it has to, I feel like, again, education is like so backwards in a way. Um, like also bringing up, it has to be in the curriculum. Consent education also is very important. Yeah. Explaining yeah. to people, because I've heard like comments like, you know, where um, they say, um, you know, stories of, of men and women who are married and whatnot. And the husband like forces himself on the wife. And people are like, well, no, they're married. Absolutely. fucking no, 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 no means no. It doesn't mean no. like, even if you, you no. even if you think like it's a playful no, doesn't if the matter. person repeatedly says no doesn't to you matter. and pushes you away and you still uh, force yourself on them, guess what? That's, that's, a, that's, that's rape. I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you're a boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't care what yeah. your relationship is. If you're forcing or coercing someone into something that they're clearly saying no to, that yeah. means that it's violent. It's a violent act. And this is why one of these things, it's one of these things of consent. People, we need to be educated in it. And I actually did, uh, I mean, it's, it's also like I, I, I put up um, Beauty Unlocked um, on the Instagram feed. Consent. Consent education. I don't care what age, how old you are, and what you think you know, you don't know. Go and educate yourselves. Because there are multiple, there have been multiple times where I'm watching pornography. And again, I, just for those who are tuning in just now. Um, I sometimes watch pornography for this, for these podcasts. And I'm just like, okay, well, what is it? Not necessarily to rub one out, but regardless of that is the fact that there's some mm -hmm. episodes or some yeah. videos where you're just like, that girl wants to stop that. It's obvious that she doesn't want to keep going. It's obvious. And sometimes it happens with male actors as well. They're like, I don't feel comfortable with doing this anymore. And you can tell, like, their body language all of a sudden just changes. And you posted this on your feed, and it was like, um, it's okay to say no, whatever, et cetera. It's okay to stop at any fucking point. I don't care if the dude is inside of you, and you, if you don't feel comfortable, stop. And you should respect the stop. If you're close to busting yeah. and she says, or he says, stop, you fucking stop. Like, that's it. Like, th there's no debate. I don't know why a no is negotiable. Like, I don't understand how a no yeah, is you negotiable. Try, you have to try to, And again, that's one of the things of in porn as well. You have to convince them. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's the chase. And it's like, you have to be aggressive. And, and uh, it's the thing of uh, the toxic masculinity also, and very small dick energy um, as well, that men are raised to be aggressive and to know is not an answer. You know, this is also one of those things that's again, mm -hmm. ingrained in, in society that men do not take no for an answer. And, you know, and yeah, and that's the thing. And I don't care if you have a 10 inch dick and you are the best fucking shagger in the world. If you are not in touch with your feelings, if you are not mature enough to take a no, if you are not mature enough to understand that sex can be messy and dirty, and that still doesn't mean that I am any less I just, a person. I, yes, and this, this whole thing I'm not also interested. of like people believing I am not that sex interested. is, is You perfect, do not turn me on. Or is not messy. And I don't know this, that, and the other. What world live in oh yeah right because you're seeing it in whatever in a studio yeah. whether it be in a movie let's say like a hollywood actual movie or in a tv a show, studio or in yeah. porn where you do not see juices and this and that and whatnot like flying all over the place yep. you know what i mean like in the sense of and so people have this like perception of like no sex is supposed to be clean huh what yeah, of course. Yeah, make weird noises. Weird noises come out. It's messy. It's sweaty. No, Guess what? No, you know, it's not perfect sex, where there's somebody, <laughs> you know, sponging you down so you're not sweaty. It's not how. And your makeup does smear as well. You know, it's it's these things. I don't know. And your I makeup. Think there's just smears. So I think we. It's it's really pushing. I mean, it, it it I don't even know how to like how we can change this in, you know, in society where I, that's the thing. 
it's that's the thing. I mean, yes, to say yes, we need more consent education. We need more sexual education. We need uh, parents to also step up their game. You know, this is one of the things that I I know I don't have children and stuff like that, and I don't know if I will ever procreate. But in the sense of, if you're a parent, you 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 have taken on the responsibility of guiding your children in every way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? It means having those talks. You know, it's one of those. You you got to be a parent. Sean, I know I'm going to try. Her. How dare you have no children? Yeah, no, but I've dealt with children. Okay, <laughs> like I've trigger. dealt with them, and I'm just and 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 we've all dealt with. We're all somebody's child. We are all somebody's child. It's the truth. The shit that we're going through right now, the trauma that we're trying to heal, Stop it's from fired. our childhood, by the way, you guys. And we're trying to no, heal it, it in our 30s or you know whatever we started our healing journey and stuff like that. People who decide to have children have to step up their game and not say, oh, it's not my responsibility to talk to my children about sex. What the f- oh, who's Whose is it? Who's it? Or how? And how can you say it is a responsibility? How no, can it you is. say, oh, um, how can you be against uh, then your, it uh, a it school, your for example, where a child is, is a student, enrolled as a student, and you say, no, I don't want my child to, to, to learn about sexual education. So how are, so what? What, hold up what do you mean yeah, so yeah. you don't want to have oh, yeah. that talk or that conversation with your child and you also refuse oh, yeah. them yeah, that yeah. education at school whatever education might be not the greatest education but even like the basics of it all you know um you don't even want that for them but it doesn't it doesn't work if they're still witnessing violence at home like that's the thing like and what we're forgetting here to to mention i want to sort of like wrap it here is the fact that yeah. Violence is not strictly pornography and it's not strictly somebody like beating the shit out of somebody. Violence is like we've said, it's making Unworthy. you feel less than what you you feel, like making you feel like you're lesser than that, yes. basically. Unworthy. Um, violence is gaslighting you. Violence is diminishing your emotions. Violence is making you feel like you will never be good enough. Violence, that is an act of violence and it's not just it's not just in the physical it it's also in, in the friendships verbal. we see it it's verbal, in you know school verbal uh, there's the huh? verbal abuse there's the physical abuse a lot of people associate exactly. violence with beating the shit like we right. said, out of someone or whatever no it's not only that there's different forms of violence and one of them is verbal violence as well emotional like it's just it's it's, it's a lot it's a lot and i think when we wrap up you know our this has been a really good journey of pornography yeah, and like the influence that it has on people. I think that some people get really riled up that we don't stick to the topic. We, we put in, we have to put in our our two cents and also our experiences. And it, yes, we get sidetracked. Yes, we talk about a whole bunch of other things, and we might not be pushing like statistical information down your throats or whatever. But we'll put it up on you know on social media and whatnot. You know, um, if you're really interested in just us regurgitating statistical data about some things. But at the end of the day, I think it's just like, we're here to have a, a normal converse, a normal, yeah, yeah, a conversation. I don't like using the word normal. Um, just a conversation. We can talk about everything and, and anything and we'll have an opinion. And it's, <laughs> and people obviously will agree with what sometimes what we say and other times they won't, you know. No, I agree. And that's the beauty of this. And sometimes we disagree with each other. And it's, I think that that's absolutely fine as well. And I think people have forgotten how to have a discourse. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, no, what you're saying is your opinion. And you think that I should abide to your opinion. It's tribalism. It's like, no, I don't, I don't have to. And that's just, you know, I mean, again, it depends on what form of opinion, obviously, when we're talking, I mean, you know what I mean? There's things where it can end friendships. Like if you're a racist motherfucker, I ain't going to be your friend anymore. If you're like displaying some sort of, you know, whatever, and you're not holding yourself accountable, no. you know what I mean? But in the sense of the discussions that we have and stuff like that, we like we respect each other's opinion. And we're still friends after 25 years. So, you know. I know. Where can we find you, the daughter of Lilith? You can find me on Instagram as the daughter of Lilith. Please come and join the family. Um, it is consistently growing. And I just love meeting each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for those who have joined the family. And also, please, uh, sorry, guys, I was just serving myself coffee because, you know, that's what I do in the mornings. 
Um, and also my personal blog is smoke in your, in our eyes, uh, wordpress.com. It is on the actual link, uh, bio uh, on Instagram. It is a personal blog. It talks about life. And as well, I have one that is based on working with Lilith and, uh, claiming your power and claiming everything that is meant to be yours. It is not for the weak hearted none of this is for the weak hearted <laughs> not even our personalities are for the weak hearted let's, let's just be no, honest that is true strong personalities are an acquired taste it is um but if there's something that i can tell you all is even though pornography is what we're focusing on one of the biggest things that i promote is your self-dignity and your boundaries you deserve the best and you deserve to be treated with respect and Carissa will testify to that. She has known me for 25 years. <laughs> so. We're all about the truth. We're all about spreading that love, you guys. It's all about love. It's all about checking in. Also with mental health. It's all about your mental health, your well-being, overall well-being. Um, and that's, I mean, I mean, like you said, 25 years of a friendship. So we don't talk shit, you guys. We talk the truth. <laughs> that's right. And some of you will not like it. And that's. We did make some controversial statements, but too bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you know. I hope that you check out the bonus material of us ranting politically yes. because it was great. <laughs> oh, we're going to hear some of that, but I'll be like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Seriously, as always, it's a pleasure to have you. I will be putting and posting on my social media um, the daughter of Lilith's link and also her, like, the link to her blog and also yes it was a pleasure speaking to you as always and i cannot wait for the next time thank you so much love you take care you guys bye wow